What's up guys? Welcome to Anime Kahai. If you'd like to help me out, please hit the like button and subscribe to my channel. It was now time for us to start the liberation of Veldora without further delay. I would have done as Raphael advised and summoned the devils here. I was then interrupted. Kondo was the first to act, probably realizing that continuing to do nothing would be risky. He didn't care that I was well outside the handgun's regular range as he continued to fire. The speed of a bullet approaching me was many times that of sound. My thoughts were moving a million times more swiftly than usual, and I soon understood what kind of attack it was. I reminded Raphael that it had a responsibility to protect me, and it answered with an assured sounding, acknowledged. One of the abilities Uriel granted me was absolute defense, and it would have no trouble stopping this menace. This was nothing at all in comparison to the assault on Veldora. Report. Barrier breaking assault detected. Effectively neutralized. Additional attacks that destroy magic and spirits have been discovered. Neutralized. These attacks were subjected to an analyze and assess round, and it was discovered that Sandalfon, Lord of Judgment was used in them, starting the countermeasures. While I cast a quick glance over Kondo, Damrata, and the others, I let Raphael do its job. Later, I would handle them. Whatever they used to assault Veldora was a threat, but I don't think Kondo used it on me, and I'm sure there was a good reason. For all I know, he might not be able to utilize it. If I were too close to this attack, which was moving almost as quickly as light, it would be impossible for me to avoid it. Yet, at this distance, I had a good chance of dealing with it in time, barring any unforeseen circumstances. Despite this, Kondo didn't appear to be getting up and leaving. I believed he could be ignored for the time being, even if he was guarding Rudra. I finally said it, then. Demons, come to me. Calling demon creates summon gate. In the sky, a large magic circle materialized. A huge, menacing appearing gate floated in the center of it. It called forth the demonic entities related to me by spanning space and time. Testarossa and the other demonesses were the first to respond to my call. My two demon peers, four archdemons, and the 600 subordinate demons who served them were about to follow, as well. Now most of the black core were in front of me. <laughs> I have dispatched my legion to guard the city, Sir Rimuru. Bravo, Diablo. Without me having to speak a word, he is already aware of my specific needs. Everyone who wasn't on assignment was present, except for Venom who was busy protecting Masayuki. Benamaru also regained control after handing it over to Moss and gave orders to all of his soldiers. They were ready to help me right away without me having to speak a word to them. Right. Before someone else interrupts me, let's quickly finish this ceremony. The demons bowed down in front of me as soon as I touched down. Standing in the front, Testarossa and her friends had a rather dejected expression. Perhaps they felt they had disobeyed my instructions. We are very, terribly sorry. After seeing my face, they immediately apologized. There's absolutely nothing to apologize for, I assure you. If I had known Velgrind was going to cheat with the parallel existence idea, you would have kept her busy. That's my fault. In fact, there is no way to handle it if you are unaware of it. If you try to account for every possible fantasy ability your opponent might have, your strategy will be incoherent. This time, nothing could be done to stop it. Furthermore, Testarossa and colleagues greatly contributed, their labor was not in vain. I wanted to convey my gratitude further, but it could wait. Instead, I gave the demons a strict command. I'm going to give you all a lot of power right now, but you have to swear to me that you won't all fall asleep. All of you can put up with on the spot evolution if Diablo can. Even I believed that to be a very strange statement. I don't like to make demands for things I know I can't possibly fulfill. I was telling my demons to keep an eye out for me while I was here, this slime who couldn't stay up for his own harvest festival evolution. It made me out to be a hypocritical boss, as I suspected, but there was no time for that right now. You will fall behind if you can't keep up with me. The three demonesses greeted my statements with devious smiles, as if they had read my intentions. Can you carry that out for me? I can, of course. Absolutely. As desired, my lord. They all three appeared to be sufficiently certain. I immediately bestowed souls on every one of them. I didn't give the possibility of failure even a fleeting thought. We could at least use that as a diversion if Testarossa and her friends got out of control. I knew what my priorities were, I wasn't going to change them now. I, therefore, talked to the demons as they started to evolve. All fine, you can go on the rampage all you want for me. No matter how much death and destruction you cause, I don't care. But I won't allow any of you to die and I won't allow our enemies to obstruct me, you will act as my shield to keep them at bay until I free Veldora. I so instructed them to make a sacrifice but not to die. Though selfish, that's just who I am. What about the sister of Sir Veldora? Diablo inquired. 
I have the solution to that one. She is not a concern. You are my enemy if you mistreat me. I won't think twice about eating her. Diablo grinned broadly in response. Benamaru and Soe followed him with wry smiles, and Sheehan was beaming from ear to ear as she started her pre-battle stretch. To me, they were all trustworthy pals. Then let us work out the other distractions. At Benamaru's remarks, I nodded. Great. Now get out there and slay every one of our enemies. As you wish. Great. I no longer had any regrets and could focus on Veldora. I gave him my full attention. It appeared that Velgrind had been prepared to engage me while I was getting ready. It seems like she had totally recovered after ingesting some magicules from Veldora. The real secret to her is her healing ability, isn't it? Due to Veldora's extensive supply of magicules, she was able to recuperate so quickly. But Veldora turned hostile toward me at this point. He had unquestionably turned into Emperor Rudra's puppet. It seems that Velgrind also planned to attack me, so I suppose I had to cope with two true dragons. I knew it would be difficult, but I had to proceed. If Velgrind was going to be our opponent, as I told Diablo, we had to defeat her. Veldora, hold on. I'll get you out of there as soon as possible. I extended my wings and flew after those words. Those who remained on the scene quickly took action when Rimuru flew away. Using his understanding of the battlefield, Benamaru started giving out the proper directions. At the same moment, he sent thought communications to the city's top officials requesting that they immediately enter emergency mode. Soe sent out his replications to gather intelligence in all directions. And Diablo, more than anyone else, was completely crazy with joy. <laughs> all of you, did you witness it? Finally, Sir Rimuru is about to reveal his actual self. Sheehan gave him a rolling eye. You idiot. In whatever circumstance, Sir Rimuru always reveals his actual self. The excitement can wait until later. We must prioritize destroying our enemies. Sheehan had expressed it in a peculiar way, but he was spot on. For the first time, Rimuru was on the rampage, and Diablo was justifiably shocked. However, this was not the moment to be surprised. It was their responsibility as Rimuru's elite warriors, as Benamaru proclaimed, to deal with the unnecessary diversions. That was Rimuru's directive, and to his followers, his word was law. This was a great pleasure for the demon summoned by Rimuru. They all bristled with vigor, as if responding to the call for assistance, and their faces were beaming with glee. Their demeanor made it clear how eagerly they had been anticipating the call. Rimuru was poised to unleash his terrifying destructive abilities, displaying the depth of his rage. He gave a rather straightforward order. Kill all of our enemies. The demons were eager to begin their assignment as soon as they received this command. As our lord pleases. For the sake of their master, the fearless demons were now prepared to engage in combat. But. Wait. All the demons turned their attention to Diablo with a single word. To reassure them, he raised one hand. <laughs> Do you comprehend Sir Rimuru's directive? He said that none of you could die. Be aware that dying would be a mortal sin, one that would not be pardoned even if we all sacrificed our heads to him. The demons were subdued by Diablo's powerful proclamation. They felt more scared than reassured by his smile. Once more, it was beyond a shadow of a doubt. The demons waited for more orders in silence. Benamaru began by making a statement. I believe Diablo is correct. Don't even think of finding comfort in the fact that you are immortal. Such nonsense is no explanation for Sir Rimuru. They didn't have to die just because they may be revived after a while. Benamaru wanted to be certain that the demons understood that. Realizing that their presumptions were incorrect, they grew quiet. So. Diablo declared. We'll give you your roles now. Can you handle that for me, Sir Benamaru? How about you? Benamaru inquired, unsure of Diablo's willingness to comply with his request. Oh, if you could keep me out of it. I'm going to deal with a particular rat I'm interested in first. At the response, Benamaru shrugged. Diablo did indeed say what he anticipated, and he was correct. I see. So, go ahead and do anything you want. Benamaru believed that Diablo was not to be disturbed. Rimuru was the demon's direct superior, therefore not even Benamaru had the power to command him. Benamaru started giving commands since Diablo had given him a task. All right. Diablo, you may leave at this time. As before, Moss will continue to send me updates from the front lines. You are free to move about the battlefield as you like as long as you obey Sir Rimuru's directive. Moss agreed, and Diablo nodded with a smile. His replications were already dispersed around the area, and he had a live, real-time connection to Benamaru's mind thanks to his thought communication. Sheehan said angrily. You better not leave me out. She had the ability to teleport, but she could only do it to places she could actually see. 
Otherwise, she wasn't very adept at figuring out the necessary coordinates. Benamaru nodded and giggled a little at this. Of course not. We'll be depending on your fortitude in combat. Including Emperor Rudra, I detect the presence of eight famous individuals on the airship. Although they may be a touch tough, the battle won't be as rash as Sir Rimuru's. We ought to be able to hold our own even without Diablo. Soe cautioned that the battlefield would be somewhat challenging. 30,000 enemy reinforcements are pouring onto the battlefield. Naturally, Benamaru was aware of this. I know. It is therefore a race against time. I've told Gabble to delay as long as possible so that we can arrest the Emperor before any more lives are lost. At Benamaru's audacious remarks, Soe and Sheehan nodded. Benamaru had no other option because these were Rimuru's instructions. He had created a plan that he thought was the best since he needed to grant his requests with all of his strength. Their main goal on the battlefield was to buy time so they could attack the airship, which was the biggest threat. They decided that doing this would aid in shielding the city from an attack. Incidentally, the Velgrind replication left as backup and the single digits gathered on the airship made up the eight presences described by Benamaru. These were Marco, Damrata, the four knights who were securing the emperor, and Lieutenant Kondo. Benamaru's unique ability-born leader was able to detect them because none of them were concealing their existence. Benamaru unexpectedly received some excellent news. I just received a call from Geld. Now that his evolution is complete, he has awakened. As a result of Geld the Barrier Lord waking up, all of his men started to open their eyes as well. They would soon join the city's defense. Everyone had their positions after a quick discussion. Now all that was left to do was to believe in their success, but there was still something more to take into account. Are you all ready to fight now? Testarossa and her companions were being addressed by Benamaru. He was not going to argue this point. All he wanted to know was whether he could count on them to fight. <laughs> you don't need to ask them. I would dismiss anyone who gave a no response from the force. Diablo then focused on the demonesses. He didn't need to exert any more pressure to get them to get up. What a stupid question. There's nothing Diablo can accomplish that I can't. I don't mind it even though it sounds a little harsh. After all, I enjoy fighting. Hey anime fans, episode 12 of Solo Leveling is now live on Anime Fans Narration. Dive into Jin Woo's latest action-packed adventure filled with intense battles and epic moments. Don't miss out. Watch it now and subscribe for more exciting episodes. That's it for this video guys. Thank you for always watching my videos and supporting my channel. Shout out to the new members of Anime Kohai supporters. Jerry Sladek, William Locke, Jordan Mercia, Jay Magsino, Recruel17, Bismarck Munoz, Ryan Booker, Saagar Kotecha, Kamal Luke, Izat. Thank you so much for helping out. I'll see you guys in the next video.